Welcome back everyone to part nine in this series of creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow. In this video, we're gonna take a look at put and patching records. What do we mean by that? Well, nothing more than updating records. Put and patch actually refer to HTTP methods. So technically speaking, patch is used to update a record where all or a subset of fields are updated, where put is referring to replacing the entire record. So the existing record is actually replaced by another record. Put was actually defined as one of the original HTTP 1.1 methods back in the 1990s. Patch was subsequently introduced in 2010 to permit a partial update of an existing record. I'll put links to the RFC documents in the description below. Having said that, there's actually little or no difference between put and patch as it's implemented in ServiceNow. Because think about it, on the one hand, we're using an HTTP method, put or patch, but what's actually going on behind the scenes in the server on the application server is a JavaScript method, and in particular, a glide record.update JavaScript method that we're using to update records. So if we're using that same method, Regardless of whether it's a put or a patch, the result is actually the same. We're updating an existing record. The sys ID, the unique ID of every record in the ServiceNow instance remains the same. We're not actually deleting a record and then creating a new record because we're using put. So if we're using put or patch, we're actually doing the same thing. We're updating an existing record. The sys ID will remain the same. And if your table happens to be an audited table, you can actually have a look at the history of the changes made to records in that table, and you'll see that the update number actually increments to one whenever you update a record. Only when the field values are exactly the same in an update, then actually no update is made. So for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna use patch. We could just very well use put, but we'll use patch. Okay, so we'll come back to our scripted REST API record and we'll create a new resource. We'll give it a name, update vehicles. We'll specify the relative path as slash vehicle because we're actually gonna permit a record or one update to an individual record each time. So if you have a look at the path here, you'll notice that it's exactly the same as the first resource that we created for get where we wanted to retrieve just a single record. Well, here we're just updating a single record. We'll change the HTTP method to patch, and then we'll go ahead and I will patch the patch, <laughs> paste the JavaScript that we'll use here. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Again, we're creating an empty variable as always for our response that we will populate at the end of the script. We'll then need to retrieve the, the VIN from the path parameter. And then similar to what we did with posting or creating records, uh, we'll need to declare variables for the possible parameters that we will accept in the request body. So in this case, we're not gonna take every field that exists in the table as input. We're only going to take the, uh, the make, the model, the year, the country, and the city. Okay, in other words, we can only permit, or we're only permitting update to those fields. If a VIN isn't defined, then we're going to return an error. If none of the parameters in the request body are populated, we'll return an error as well, because we expect something. And then um, we'll do a, a glide record query using that VIN. If we don't find a record, we'll throw another error. And then we'll go ahead and assign values to those variables that we've just declared, make, model, etc., using the properties from the request body. And then we just go ahead and update that record. Okay, we set the response status to 200, and then we return an object again to the client, just to confirm that yes, we've updated the record, and these are the current values that we have now in the database for this record. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it now. For the test, I'm going to use this record here for the Ford Mustang. It's currently located in Las Vegas in the United States, and I'm just gonna copy over the VIN because we need that in our path parameter. And then we'll switch over to the REST API Explorer. We'll need to refresh the page as always to get our updated API. And then we'll come and select the patch operation here. Okay, uh, we've got one path parameter here, so we'll pop that VIN in there and we'll go ahead and populate the body. Okay, so what fields do we wanna update? Okay, again, we could use the builder, but I'll just go straight to raw and pop those details in there. 
notice here in the JSON, I've just put a little comment up the top there, but because JSON doesn't accept comments, it's kind of just functions as another property in the JSON object. Even though we haven't defined that in our API, it doesn't matter, the system will just ignore it. So for this vehicle, we've got the same make and model and year. That doesn't change. We've only changed the location, the country and the city. Okay, so if we go ahead and send that, confirm that we want to change a record, we come down, we get a 200 response. That means it's all good, hopefully. And uh, we got the result body back, confirming that we've now got the country and city fields updated. Okay. So if we come back to the table here and just refresh this list, you can see that the values have been updated here. Note also, because this is the first time we've actually performed an update using Glide Record and it's coming from a scoped application, we get this confirmation message at the top of the screen confirming that, confirming that we've actually called this API that's in the global application scope from a scoped application. So let's go back to the REST API Explorer and do a second test. This time we're not going to update all fields that are defined in the API, but just a subset of those fields. So I'll just go ahead here and paste in that. So in other words, the country and the city are now Germany and Hamburg respectively. And we can go ahead and test that, confirm it. And you can see here, same record, same sys ID, only the country and the city have been updated. So if we come back to the record and list here and just refresh it, you can see here that the city and country being updated. All right. So maybe just to round off things, we'll go back to Postman and do a test there as well. So I will go ahead and create a new request here and call this one update vehicle. Uh, we'll define the patch method and I will put in the URI that was saved earlier. But this time we'll change the VIN. I've actually gone ahead and defined another VIN variable called VIN Mustang, okay, which is the one that we just saw for that record. And we'll go ahead and specify basic authorization once more. Come to our body, needs to be raw and in JSON format. And I will just go ahead, paste that in and change the city to Frankfurt am Main in Germany. Send it. There we have it. Okay, again, come back to our record, refresh, it's been updated. So we've just gone ahead and created another resource, this time for updating existing records in our vehicles table. And remember, there's actually no difference between put and patch as far as the ServiceNow implementation is concerned. Or if there is, I don't know what it is. So if you know, put it in the comments below. Because when you update a record in ServiceNow, you're not throwing out an existing record. You're not deleting a record and then creating a new one. If you did that, you'll end up with a new sysid. It wouldn't be the same record. So if we're updating an existing record, we're using the same ServiceNow API, the glide record dot update method. Okay. And when you do that, the sysid remains the same. We just change certain fields. If it's an order to the table, then the update number will increment by one. So you know that an update has occurred. And that doesn't matter if you've defined it as a put or a patch. You can go ahead and test it yourself. The result will be exactly the same. In the next video, we'll look at creating our last resource, which will be deleting records.